Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Presenting Our Presence. Uh, this is our monthly vodcast podcast that we have here at the University of Alberta, and it's to introduce and meet and get to know all of these wonderful Indigenous folks that we uh, have at the University of Alberta that work here, um, that contribute so immensely to this community. Uh, my name is Michelle DeRocher. I am from the Fishing Lake Métis Settlement, and uh, I work at the um, President's Office as the Executive Operations Coordinator. Uh, today, I am joined by my colleague Florence as my co-host and our guest, Lacey Whatney. Lacey, I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and uh, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself now uh, in the way that is most comfortable for you. Awesome. Well, good morning. It's wonderful to be able to visit with you today on this beautiful day. My name is Lacey Whitney. I'm from Red Pheasant Cree Nation, and I now reside in Amiskachu, Wiskaigan, so Edmonton. Um, I'm Cree Nakota from Red Pheasant Cree Nation. My father is Cree from Red Pheasant. My mother is Nakota from Carry the Kettle, both in Saskatchewan. I'm a mother of a teenage son who I'm extremely proud of. I work here at the U of A in the position of an Iganu at First People's House, the First Nations Métis Inuit Student Service Centre. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me be part of this podcast. This is my first one, so I'm excited. That's so great. It's so nice to meet you, Lacey. Um, I, you know, it's really funny. Even though I am from Fishing Lake, I have, obviously, we all have family everywhere. So I remember when you talked about being from Red Pheasant, I'm like, oh, I have family in Red Pheasant. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yes, <laughs> um, we're all but yeah, we're all related. <laughs> we'll find cousins everywhere. Um, so um, I know that we had talked about, uh, you just mentioned as well, mm -hmm. working at First People's House. Um, and so I just wanted to, to ask you a couple of questions, like what what is that like? And, and uh, how did you find yourself here at the university? Yeah, so what it's like is it's been such an amazing, amazing opportunity for me to come and work here. Um, the people that I work with are amazing. Um, the students that we get to help are amazing. Um, they inspire me every day um, and how I got here. Um, so I got my degree in social work and I started working for my community in child and family services. And I was there for a few years and then all my family started to migrate to Edmonton. And so I kind of followed suit and um, I was looking online and I was looking for uh, somewhere that would fit me, my values, my interests. And I came across the listing for First People's House and I was just so impressed with um, the values and um, the mission and also that there was so much Cree incorporated into it and, and Indigenous ways of knowing incorporated into it. And so it really piqued my interest and I applied and here I am. Uh, I was re really impressed with First People's House when I when it started to kind of grow and build because when I did my degree, that wasn't a thing that we had here. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you see this space like contributing to to Indigenous students' experience here? Yeah, I think it's a very very important space on campus. I know that our students, um, a lot of our FNMI students what's important to them is community, it's hands-on learning, it's truth-telling, it's balance, it's land-based learning. Our traditional knowledge is just as important, if not more important than what we learn in these institutions. So being able to connect our students with that and to, um, yeah, just to, to connect them with that, it really helps them on their journey. Yeah, I, I think it would have been, when I think back, I'm like, oh, that would have been so beneficial to me because uh -huh. it was very much a fish out of water situation. Uh -huh right back when when I did my degree yeah. do you see the like the the changes in students kind of like from their first year like is, is like do you can you tell do they kind of help with other students that are younger mm -hmm. I just I'm, I'm wondering what the community looks like yeah, there's there's great opportunity for mentorship here. We have our writing mentors who are graduates, FNMI students who come and they they do drop-ins with our students. And so 
we're able to connect those undergraduates with the graduate students and and maybe encourage them to pursue that as well. But um, being able to see the transition year program students from when they first come to when they graduate at the end is so special because a lot of the times, you know, they're shy or they they can't do public speaking or anything like that. And at the end of the, the program, they're standing up using their voices it's just yeah it's beautiful so i get to see that all the time oh that's so wonderful uh florence i'll i'll pass it to you just to ask any questions if you'd like yeah thank you and thank you lacy um tell us when did you start in this role so i started i started in this role um about a year and a month ago but i started in first people's house about a year and four months ago so i've been here a little bit now i still consider myself new um they say you can still consider yourself new for up to three years so i'll keep saying that until until my three years is here i'm trying to think of how to ask this question because your responses have led me to a a couple of wonders and um one of the wonders I have is um, what are the ways in which you see your passions, your own values, your own commitments unfolding mm-hmm. in the work that you do? Yeah. So I was thinking about what I should talk about today, and I thought maybe sharing a little bit about my story and my university journey and how it drives my passion for what I do. So growing up, I spent half my time with my dad on the reserve and half the time with my mom in small towns across Saskatchewan. So I lived in two different worlds. Um, in order to and I was surrounded by my family, by my grandparents, my cousins, my aunties, my uncles. We had bison and we farmed. I grew up picking rocks and playing in hay bales. Um, And when I was with my mom is a little bit different. So small town Saskatchewan can be a hard place to live as a native person. Racism is and was very prevalent. Um, And Red Pheasant also is about 20 minutes from North Alford, which was an extremely racist town when I was a child and teenager. So I think things have gotten a little bit better now. But this area historically was really hard for native people. Examples being the 1885 public hangings of eight Native men during the Northwest resistance when our people were being starved. And of course, everyone knows about the Colton Bushy case where Gerald Stanley, a white farmer, was uh, acquitted of murder of a young First Nations man from my reserve. So all of this racism racism kind of created these self-limiting beliefs in me as a young child and as a teenager. So um, going into university with that was, was a lot to unpack. So my first go at university actually wasn't successful. And um, I was 18 years old. I just had a son. So I was a young mom. I just moved to the city for the first time on my own with a baby. Um, Oftentimes, I was the only Native person in the room. Um, I had a lot of self-doubt and a lot of um, overwhelming, uh, it's that imposter syndrome, right, that, that you can have. So I felt really small on such a big campus. And I didn't like to or even know how to ask for help. So I didn't access my First Nations Métis and Inuit Student Service Centre or any campus resources really. So it was a very isolating experience for me as a a girl from the res trying to navigate uh, this Western institutions, these institutions that weren't really created for our people to succeed. So needless to say, I quit. Um, I made the choice to leave university and my son and I moved to Vancouver Island. And that's where I kind of started my own healing journey, surrounded by the land, the ocean, the forest. Um, And then years went by and I decided to go back to university to get my degree. I was a little older now. My son was a little older. I was a little more self-aware. And for the first time ever, I actually accessed uh, the FNMI Student Service Center at my university and culture was incorporated into my curriculum. So um, I believe it's because of that that I was able to get my degree. And I tell that story of my failure not because... um, well, because if you look on a piece of paper, it just looks like I couldn't complete something. But the context is that I was a young First Nation single mother in and out of abusive relationships, struggling with the effects of intergenerational trauma that I didn't even realize were effects of intergenerational trauma, um, trying to understand myself, my culture, my identity. And as Native people, I think that uh, many of us are navigating who we are, our interests, our passions, dealing with grief and loss, highs and lows. And we're also expected to take on the stress of university. So that's what led into my passion of what I do. So my role is the leader of First People's House, and that's the Student Service Center. My job is to ensure that our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students are seen, they're heard, and that we're doing the best that we can to make sure that they reach convocation. So I try to think about myself and what I would have 
um, what would have helped me to succeed that first go at university, but had I not been so scared to ask, and I try to incorporate that into our programming. And I think about the complexities of what our students need and how we can make life just a little bit easier for them. Um, it's extremely important for me to see my people win and to etch that path forward for the students that are going to come. Wow, that's really that's really profound, Lacey, and thank you for sharing that experience. Mm-hmm. Now, I am curious because this is something um, I'm just curious about, so I'm going to ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did, you, like, I wondered where, y- when you accessed the services mm-hmm. of the Student Centre, when you attended you know, when you re- decided to return to university, were were you at a university that was in your territory in the spaces where you grew up, or was you were you at a university that had were was in the territory of other nations? So I went to the U of R, but Saskatoon campus. So okay. so U of R and First Nations University. So yes, it was in my territory. Yeah, and I was really curious because you had lived on Vancouver Island and you talked mm-hmm. about how you began to m- connect with your own healing journey. Yeah. How is it that we help, or not help maybe isn't the right word, but how is it that we invite students to see whichever nation they're from as having a space, right? In So in First People's House, in at the University of Alberta, because we have students from diverse nations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's really important that all of our students from everywhere across Turtle Island can see themselves here. So we try to be very diverse with our programming. Like we're right now, we're in the process of planning our Métis Week uh, um, coming up. And we know there's an Inuit Day coming up, so we need to start planning for that. Um, of course, we we are we do use a lot of Cree. Um, my title's in Cree. Um So, yeah, we just try to be very diverse and welcoming. And if we don't know something or if there's a student who wants to see something, they can always come and talk to us and we can find a way to incorporate that into our programming as well. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, I was thinking, well, when I went to university, the I think there was a facility at this place when I first came to the University of Alberta I think it was called Native Student Services yeah. Center it was so far a- ago it was oh, okay <laughs> further back okay oh further back and <laughs> what was interesting about it I mean I attended university before there was the internet <laughs> so <laughs> um and I didn't even know that that building existed or that yeah. place existed because that was the time where you looked had to look through um books to find mm-hmm. places so yeah but it was a place that i always assumed was just for supporting students mm-hmm. and in my interpretation at that point in my life was if you needed help right but like you I didn't even know when I was 17 or mm-hmm. 18 years old what help I needed, right? Mm-hmm. So finding ways to invite people into those spaces is yeah. such an important part of the work that I believe you're doing. Yeah, community, creating community is so important. And and I, I believe that we are, we're able to do a lot of that. We have a lot of... Um, we have student meals that we do once a month. We host the um, annual round dance, which is one of our uh, U of A's largest events on campus. So um, we try to do, or we have our annual orange shirt week um, activities. Um, so yeah, we, we just try to keep, create that community for our students so that they know that they um, belong here. That's really beautiful that you, the way that you just said that, that you belong here. I think that's really important. That's the biggest thing that we want them to take away right is that this place was not built for us as indigenous folks um but you do belong here that's a really important message um one of the things i was was wondering was um we were talking about like working with students and everything so what what would you say is your favorite part of that of your of of your day of your week of your year or whatever we talked about some of the events 
So what would you say is your favorite part of this of this work you do? Yeah. Um, oh, I have a lot. <laughs> um, I have a lot. Like every day is, I love waking up every day just to come into work. It's such a, a, a beautiful experience. Um, but one of my favorite things is convocation. So First People's House, we actually get to be on stage, uh, staff member and elder um, get to be on stage to um, to honor our FNMI students who choose to be honored um, as they convocate and walk across the stage. So that is is just my favorite part um, of the job. And I always have to like pinch myself during the ceremony so I don't cry because um, I'm a very emotional person. But um, it just makes me so proud to see all the students. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I'm with you. I'm a very emotional person too. So that <laughs> part when I watch convocation, that part gets mm -hmm. to me too. Seeing, seeing the elder on stage, especially. Yeah. When I graduated from Augustana, which is where I did my, my degree, my graduation year was the first year at Augustana that we did anything for mm. First Nations and Inuit Native students. And there was two of us. Wow. There was two of us that wanted to be recognized as yes. FNMI graduates. Yeah. And I, so I always joke that I'm like, well, I was the first one. But that's because they do the Bachelor of Arts before they do the Bachelor of Science. <laughs> <laughs> so had they done science first, it would have been Sarah that got to go first. But, you know, they do BAs first, so it was me. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember that, and I remember feeling like it was so significant, right? Like, I, I didn't graduate, like, I graduated in, in 2008. Like, mm -hmm. that wasn't that long ago. Or as I like, I like to tell myself, it wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. But to, for all of these years at Augustana, that that wasn't something that they did yet. Mm -hmm. But the year I graduated is the year they were like, hey, we see that you've self-identified. Would you like us to recognize that when you convocate? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, well, what does that mean? What Like, what's going to happen? And they were still in the infancy, too. Of like, well, we think that we'll get an elder to come and we think you'll get a feather. And I was like, OK, so what, what else? And you know, what, what does this mean? And it was really interesting. And we did some, there was some extra work that we did. I did an interview and that was also the kind of infancy of the, our own um, Indigenous Student Services Center at Augustana. So everything was brand new. And I was like, just, just missing out. Like I was, I was leaving as it was kind of growing. So I guess what, like, so I'm, what I'm leading into is what do you see for the future for First People's House. Because like I said, I saw the infancy of things happening on my campus. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm wondering what are your hopes for, for the future of First People's House? Yeah, so our FNMI student population is growing rapidly here at the U of A. Um, and so First People's House uh, needs to grow alongside it. So if you were to come to First People's House right now, um, you would walk down a long hallway to a back corner of a building and um, we're a small space. Uh, we can fit about 40 to 50 students in our space comfortably. Um, and when I said we have monthly meals, we get about 250 students that come through the doors and they kind of, they can't sit and visit. They have to kind of just grab their food and walk out. And so that's not really um, conducive to that community that 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 we need. Um, so so the future of First People's House is that we are going to be moving um, in 2026 into a much larger space in the heart of campus. Um, and we're going to be able to welcome all of our students in and be able to expand our programming bigger um, than we've ever been able to before. So there's a lot of exciting things coming. Um, yeah. That's so exciting. I'm really looking forward. To, I know 2026 seems so far away. It's actually not, which yeah. is also wild. It's actually, that's not that far away. Um can you tell me more? Like, do you do you know what kind of what the space is going to look like or or where it's going to be on campus? Yeah, so um, it will be, um, we are repurposing the old Coots Library that was decommissioned. Um, I don't remember which year it was, but it was quite a few years back. Um, so that space was available and um, we jumped at the opportunity to take it. And that uh, was led by Shana Dion. 
um, pushing this this forward, this conversation that's been happening for 50 years about getting a bigger space for our FNMI students. Um, and so we, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be huge. We say it's going to be like three football fields on top of each other. Um, and yeah, so three floors. Um, we're going to um, have a lot of opportunities for um, academic wellness for our students, mental wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness, um, and of course, cultural wellness. So there's going to be a lot of things going on in there. There's going to be something going on every day, all day. So I'm just trying to rest while I can now before it opens and, and it's going to be crazy. Well, that sounds so exciting. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, I know Florence, you are probably going to be involved mm -hmm. in some way, right? Yeah. So what is what is that going to look like? Do you know, Florence? Well, I mean, it's been a really exciting process because um, the Coots Library was closed, and this is the this is the library that's attached to the Faculty of Education building or the education complex. And like Lacey said, it's sort of in the heart of campus. It's just south of one of the LRT stations and just across 80, north of 87th Avenue and across from one of the research uh, buildings, the medical research buildings. And it's just so people know to the east of the education complex. And I actually get dropped off in the parking lot close to there every day. So I love to see the progress that's been mm -hmm. happening. And um, it's really beautiful now because they've, they've cut out where the new entrance is going to be. But that, that building in that library, as Lacey said, was decommissioned about four years ago now, I believe. And um, it was actually, uh, at the time, the Indigenous Advisory Council made, were aware of this, and Shana was involved at the time in the Indigenous Advisory Council. And uh, we, we encouraged the university to look at that space for First People's House. So it has been, and then Shana has been taking the lead on helping bring together all of the networks. Like the way we get work done at the university is really a big distributed network. And um, we've had to work closely with our colleagues across facilities and operations, across um, development and external relations, because we it was really important for Shana and the students and the staff and alumni related to First People's House that there be ceremony and that this be done in a really nice way, in a good way. And I think just, um, there have been quad posts about some of the ceremony that has occurred around this new space. So it's been really exciting to see how it's unfolding, how inclusive the process is, so that the work can be grounded in ceremony so that this space will unfold and will contribute to the, I'm going to say, the experiences that First Nations, Inuit, and Métis students really need to have space, but also need to have these multi-dimensional ways of expression and how they come into the student services at the University of Alberta. So it's a very exciting space, I think. And and Lacey being um having joined about 18 months ago, then sort of came along with that con yeah. those contributions, I think, right, Lacey? Yes, yes. I did not know that I was going to become an architect and a designer and an engineer, but I did. But it's it's been such an amazing process to see how they build buildings. So we have to sit on um myself and Shana and Suzanne, we sit in a, in a meeting every Tuesday with partners and engineers and um and we get to go over what we'd like to see um 
the the design process. We've learned so much about cladding and about um, just things I had no idea about before. Um, but yeah, very interesting meetings. Um, like Florence said, it's grounded in ceremony. You know, there's going to be medicine in the walls. Um, the students are going to feel it when they come in there. Everything is very intentional, um, made for them and for their well-being. So what's really interesting as well, and what I also would like to highlight is, I mean, what this example is a way of saying, how is it that we do this work around space, around buildings? And Indigenous voices are present from the very beginning. And because in some cases at universities, the buildings get built, and then they say, come to us and oh, how can we do this, right? So what I'm really appreciating about the work that, um, you know, our colleagues connected with First People's House, Shana, this transition year program, and Suzanne, is that we, the voices are present on an ongoing basis, and the work is unfolding in a way that has not unfolded, in my understanding, at the University of Alberta previously. So I think this is going to be a beautiful example of a case study, mm -hmm. you know, as we look at spaces. And um, yeah, so it's it's going to be very exciting mm -hmm. <laughs> as you begin to plan for that opening day, Lacey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Lacey, what uh, you also mentioned that you have a, a son, I think you said. Tell us what is it that you like to do in your off time? Yeah, so uh, my son is 17. So um, we pretty much grew up together, him and I. So um, we, I, we love to travel. So we really like, I've, I've taken him around the world. I think it's so important to be able to experience other cultures and, and to expand your mind that way. So uh, we travel, we like to go on road trips. Um, you can find us a lot of time at the dog park with our golden retriever. Um, yeah, we like to cook. There's um, anything and everything, really. The movies, long walks. Is, is he considering coming to the U of A? Is that something in his plan? Or is he kind of going to forge his own path? I'm really trying. I'm really trying to get him to come here. Um, like I said, we grew up in Saskatchewan, so he's very much into that, the trades. So um, he's he's looking into possibly welding or um, um, heavy duty mechanics. And I told him to come to U of A and take business and you can own one of those companies. So we'll we'll try and we'll try and get him there. Yeah, it's that balance, isn't it, about encouraging people that you love to explore the paths that they want. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, it's always an interesting conversation to have. <laughs> <laughs> as yeah well Lacey this has been a true gift to have you with us today and I would love to invite you to offer any final words wonders spaces any questions that you have and you're thinking about this vodcast and how we how we tried to make visible I mean the vodcast came about because we I when I first was invited into this role, I said I wanted to make visible Indigenous voices, Indigenous employees' voices at the University of Alberta, and to demonstrate and to make visible the ways in which First Nations, Inuit, Métis employees contribute to this big, complex space. So I invite you now to share whatever you'd like as closing remarks to our uh, time together today. I guess I just wanted to say that I think that this podcast is amazing and what you're doing is is really much needed on campus and that um, I felt so welcomed and accepted ever since I started here with the FNMI community on campus and also with the Dean of Students who we work under. Um, there's some really beautiful leadership there. And I just look forward to the incoming students that are coming in the fall. And this is going to be a great year. And I will see them all at convocation. 
I just love that. That was so sweet, Lacey. You keep, you keep leading me into these really wonderful <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> I'll see them at convocation. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm really excited for the future of First People's House and seeing it grow and having it there for me, as you said, like encouraging some youth that we know to come here. I think that is, for me, is going to be part of, of what I do. I have nieces and nephews yeah. and just telling them, hey, well, Auntie is here, but also this great community is here and they'll help you too. And you can make friends there. It can be so uh, intimidating wow. to come to this place uh -huh. without knowing that you can find, like that, that there's built in this resources and this help, right? Yeah, and to never be shy to even come into First People's House because the staff here is just incredible and they yeah. care so much about the students. I've never seen, you know, staff care so much about the clients that they work for. And so it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. See, that's it's so exciting. And uh, I'm just really excited to see the the new space and what that looks like and how uh, how I, I, as even as a staff member, I'm like, I want to go see. I want to go look. <laughs> I'm not like I'm maybe I'll be a student again. Who knows? Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll sign up for some classes so I can come and hang out with you, Lacey. Thank you so much. Uh, it was really great talking with you today. I really appreciate that. So hi, Thank hi. you guys for having me. Have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm.